All right, so these notes are 1.2. We're solving multi-step equations here. Um, and we're looking at this word problem for starters. Uh, today, I think at least the day of this recording, is 921. So you can write the date if you're watching this video um, in years in the future here. Uh, you just write the today's date. It might not be 921. Uh, we're looking at this tree and the height of the tree after x years. So I guess that x is years. This is a number of years. And the height of the tree is eventually going to be 24 feet tall. So the question to you, uh, whoever's watching this and whoever's in class here, is what, how can I use that 24 in this expression, equation, whatever you want to call it? Okay, so that's the question. Go ahead, Lily. So here's what I'm kind of looking at. I'm looking at the tree is eventually going to be some height. So I'm going to actually call it, I, I know that eventually the tree is going to equal 24 feet, eventually. I don't know. And now I know the height of the tree is this, right? The height of the tree is this right here. So I know that this can kind of just go here, right? 1.5x plus 15. I'd like to try to break this down, okay? So if I was to break this down, I would say, what would I say for this? This, in your own plain English, what is the 24 representing? Yes. Okay, so the, I'll just call it the height. The height, and I'm going to call that someday. I don't know when, but that's the height someday. What do you think that this represents, the 15? We kind of talked about it. What do you think? What does that 15 represent? It's just a straight number. Ava? Yeah, the height. I think this is representing the height today or the initial height. We like to call it initial height, especially especially in like physics class. And what do you think this 1.5x represents? What do you think that represents? Yes. Yes, I want to use the word the rate at which the tree is growing. That's the rate of the tree's growth. So this is the rate at which it grows. I'm going to be nice and say how fast the tree is growing or the tree grows 1.5 a year, right? So one, how fast it grows. Can somebody tell me how fast they think it grows? How fast do you think it grows? Yes. 1.5 1. 5 feet per year. Good. So now we just need to solve this equation. That's really all there is to it. So we got to solve this equation right here, which is 1.5x plus 15 equals 24. Okay. So how do we solve that equation? That's the question. What do we want to do first? Uh, yes, Sophie. Perfect. Now, I want to say to everybody that a rule of thumb is to always use addition or subtraction first. It's not, it's not necessarily that you have to do that, but the rule of thumb is to cancel things out with addition and subtraction first and try to get this box containing the x alone. Now I would say that the box containing the x is alone. It's 1.5x equals, and I'm just going to do this math out. I think it comes out to 9. Now that that box is alone, I've isolated the box, now I can use my one-step equation skills. So, Natalie, do you know what we would do here? We would divide by 1.5. Exactly, we'd divide by 1.5. So we divide both sides by 1.5, and we have to think logically. 1.5 and 1.5 is what? Three. three. Yeah, 1.5 and 1.5 is three. I've got two fingers up right now. So if I put up four fingers, four 1.5s, what's that? If two was three, what's four? Six, yeah. And if I put up six fingers, well, if I put up six, six times 1.5, well, if, if two times it was three and four times that was six, so six would be, I don't know, skip it, three, six, yes? Nine. So I think x is going to equal six, right? And if you think about it, if you take, if you take 9 and you, take, and you divide it by 1.5, you, you know what I'm saying? Or if you take 6 and you multiply that by 1.5, either way, take 6 and multiply it by 1.5, you'll get 9. So that's where we are at with that. So what I want you to do now is just to try to solve some equations. So I want you to focus on solving 
Um, I think what we'll do is I'll show you how to solve one and then maybe you'll solve two and three. So let me show you how to solve one. So this one's pretty straightforward. I'm saving the hard ones for you. So on this equation, what do we want to cancel out first? What did I say the rule of thumb is? The rule of thumb in general, Rachel. Uh, uh, just, wait, what do you want to cancel out? Yeah, what do I want to cancel out? Yeah, so I would want to subtract one from both sides. As a general rule, I want to use the subtraction and addition first. I want to get the box alone, the box containing the z, right? And now I have that alone. I have this equation. Yes, next step. Can you divide negative 3 by 2, 3, Yes, so I divide 6 by negative 3, and I divide negative 3z by negative 3. What's a common mistake here? What's a common mistake that people make? What's a common mistake? Yes? They don't, um, well, in the answer, they don't put the negative sign, but... That's definitely common. In regu um, they, um, they don't divide by negative 3, they just divide by positive 3. Yes. It's very common that people will divide by positive 3 because what do we do here? Up here, we change the sign. And down here, we don't change the sign, which seems kind of weird. But obviously, the opposite of addition is subtraction. But the opposite of multiplication is just division. It doesn't matter the sign, right? So we don't change the sign in this situation, OK? So the last thing we'll do is you will pause the video and try this problem right here. So give this problem a shot, and then we will be uh, calling it good. That's all we have to do, OK? So try that problem. Okay, so I took a bit of a break. I'm not exactly sure where we were, but I think we're pretty close to here. And we're saying that z is negative 2. Um, and we kind of have solved number 1. So I think at this point, you're supposed to pause the video and try equation 2 and equation 3, actually. Um, so try both of those. Make sure you show work, because you will not get credit unless you show work on your note paper. So all of the work, okay? So pause the video and give that a shot. Okay, so the answer to this one is x equals negative 32, if I'm not mistaken. And then let's get the answer to, negative, to number 3. So make sure you've paused and you've done out all of the work for problem 3. No credit if there's no work. So pause the video right now. All right, and so for this one... We're looking for n equals negative one half for number three. So those are the answers to two and three. So you know whether you got those or didn't get them, and hopefully that will, um, you know, be helpful to you. Like I need a little more practice, or I'm pretty much there. I'm ready. So moving on to this next page, let me just show you one like this. Um, perhaps I'll show you uh, this problem, just in case you didn't get the last one. So if you didn't get the last one, you want to watch this very diligently. We're combining similar terms first, so that's the first thing we want to do. We're going to bring down that negative 25 and that negative 35. And then we want to make sure we get all of the, if you look at this right now, the x's are on the left. The x's are red, right? And the constants are on the right and on the left. So we want to bring the constants, and that's a whole constant term. That means it has no variable in it. Those are on the right and the left, so we want to move them away from here. We want to get add 25, add 25. This is a bigger number. The, this, this negative number has more strength. It's bigger. It's going to have more pull, so we're going to have a negative 10. And so now we need to divide. Remember to divide by the same sign, and we always divide by the number with the x, okay? So don't forget that you're dividing by the number with the x. Sometimes people will... Um, divide this backwards. They'll divide by the t negative 10 instead of by the 2. But now we want to cancel, get the x alone, and a negative divided by a positive is a negative. So there's that. So I'm going to show you a little bit on this problem, and I'll have you finish it up, um, this problem here. So remember, you can pause and rewind if I'm going too fast. I'm trying to keep the video short for you. We're going to distribute this, and I want to talk about this. What I want to do here is I want to recognize that when we're doing the distributive property, actually, we are going to, first in red, multiply 2 times 1, and that is just 2. 
okay? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply two times negative five, and a positive times a negative is a negative, so I'm gonna have negative 10x. So this is how we do the distributive property. What I want you to do is pause the video, pause the video, and finish up this problem. So pause it right now. So this answer comes out to a fraction. If I'm not mistaken, it comes out to 14 over 10, which is 7 over 5. So keep that in mind. Um, hopefully you got there. And um, that's pretty much where we want to be. Uh, there's one more problem here. So take a moment and try to think about this problem. This is going to be your big challenge for today. Pause the video. Do this problem out. And um, we will probably go over it again soon. So pause the video. Try this problem. This is the last thing I want you to get done here. And really from there, we can call it. So this is the end of the video. Make sure you do all the problems. You might have some things on your notes that aren't filled in. We will um, cover those soon. Thanks a lot.